the next and final chapter in our course on vehicle dynamics and control is on vehicle motion planning. We begin this chapter with an overview of the hierarchy of motion planning algorithms in an automated vehicle. The first step in this planning hierarchy is navigation, which is the same thing that would be used by a human driver. It means that if the car should ultimately go from A to B, like for instance from Hamburg to Munich, the navigation algorithm is responsible for finding the best route on the map. Meaning, for instance, the route with the shortest travel time or the one that minimizes energy consumption. The optimal route is then passed on to the rest of the motion planning stack, which is unique to automated vehicles and does not exist for human-driven vehicles. And the next step in this motion planning stack is tactical decision making, which refers to high-level decisions about the maneuvers of the vehicle, like for example, whether or not to do an overtaking maneuver, whether or not to change the lane, whether or not to stop at an intersection and let other traffic participants pass or whether to go in front of them, or for example, picking a proper parking lot or choose a reference speed on a particular segment of the road, and so on. The resulting maneuver decision, ordering the car, for instance, to perform a lane change or a parking maneuver, is then passed on to a motion planning module in a stricter sense of the expression. This means that a path or trajectory is computed for the vehicle, which respects all relevant kinematic and dynamic constraints, and which optimizes a given set of criteria related, for instance, to the comfort of the passengers, the speed of the vehicle, or the energy consumption. This path or trajectory then serves as a reference input for the next layer, which is called vehicle control. Essentially, the goal of vehicle control is to make the vehicle track the given reference path or reference trajectory as accurately as possible. To this end, the vehicle control module coordinates all the actuators that are available in the vehicle as effectively as possible to reach its desired goal. Besides the most common actuators, like the steering system, the powertrain, and the braking system, this may also include less common actuators such as a rear wheel steering system or active suspensions. Finally, the vehicle control module issues reference commands to each of these single actuators. This could include, for instance, a reference steering angle for the steering system and a reference acceleration for the powertrain or a reference deceleration for the braking system. The actuators themselves have, again, actuator level controllers whose goal it is to track these reference commands as accurately as possible. In this automated vehicle architecture, the first three layers are collectively referred to as planning modules and the last two layers are collectively referred to as control modules. So the motion planning hierarchy in this case consists of three modules, the navigation module, the tactical decision making module and the motion planning module and the interface towards the control part of the vehicle is via a path or trajectory. You should bear in mind that this is only a rough diagram of an automated vehicle architecture. In reality, each of the layers shown here may be broken down into a number of sublayers. For instance, the motion planning layer is often broken down into a module for global motion planning, another module for local motion planning, and then another module for trajectory smoothing. Regarding replanning or computation frequency, we can only provide rough indications here as real values vary quite a lot from system to system. For navigation, the replanning 
typically happens every 10 to 60 seconds. A new tactical decision is typically made every 100 to 500 milliseconds and a new motion plan is typically computed every 50 to 200 milliseconds except in some emergency avoidance scenarios where a new trajectory needs to be computed faster, for example, within 10 or 20 milliseconds. For vehicle control, the sampling time is typically between 10 and 100 milliseconds and actuator control typically runs at a sampling time between 1 and 10 milliseconds. After this general introduction into an automated vehicle architecture and an overview of the hierarchy of motion planning algorithms, we will next take a closer look at this motion planning module here and also at the question what is the difference between a path and a trajectory. Let's take a look at the latter question first. It's important to note that the expressions path and trajectory are not identical even though they have a few things in common. In particular, a path and a trajectory are both spatial curves consisting of x, y and psi values that are to be followed by a given vehicle reference point. In principle, this reference point can be selected as any point of the vehicle. The most common selections, however, are to put the reference point into the midpoint of the rear axle, which is typically used for low speed applications, meaning low speed maneuvering or parking, for instance, or to put the reference point into the center of gravity of the vehicle, which is typically used for high speed applications, such as highway driving. From the perspective of general robotics, vehicles fall into the category of so-called non-holonomic robots. That means that a vehicle is not able to move sidewards or turn on the spot. As a result, the spatial curves that a vehicle can follow in the XY plane are not arbitrary. For example, they cannot have kinks. Hence, a valid path or trajectory for a vehicle cannot be planned as simply a curve in a xy plane, but we have to consider the three-dimensional space, including also the orientation or your angle psi of the vehicle. This three-dimensional space xy psi is also called the configuration space. Furthermore, in order to be considered an admissible path or an admissible trajectory for the vehicle, the spatial curve must satisfy certain types of conditions or constraints. These conditions or constraints can be grouped into three categories. First, the kinematic constraints, which are related to the kinematics of the vehicle. So for instance, the non-holonomic constraints, meaning that there can be no sidewards movement of the vehicle and no turning on the spot, or curvature constraints. Second, dynamic constraints, which are related to the dynamics of the vehicle. For instance, concerning the longitudinal velocity or the longitudinal acceleration of the vehicle, or for instance, the tire forces. And third, no collision constraints, demanding that the path or trajectory is such that there is no collision of the vehicle with any obstacles. So much about what a path and a trajectory have in common. Next, we look at the key difference between a path and a trajectory. In fact, on the one hand, a path is just a spatial curve without a longitudinal reference. It may nonetheless be equipped with a reference velocity, saying that the given path is suitable to be driven, for instance, with a velocity of 10 meters per second. However, timing along the path is not relevant. On the other hand, a trajectory is a spatial curve with a longitudinal reference regarding timing. This means that 
the vehicle is supposed to reach all points of the trajectory at specific time points. Hence, path planning is typically used for low-speed driving scenarios with only static obstacles or obstacles that are quasi-static, meaning that either the obstacles move very slowly or it is possible to stop the vehicle at any time and hence avoiding a collision with the obstacle. On the other hand, trajectory planning is used typically for high-speed driving scenarios where we have static and dynamic obstacles present. Here, dynamic means that we cannot consider the obstacle as static and we have to consider the motion of the vehicle and of the obstacle in the future in order to be able to avoid a collision. A typical example for an application of path planning is a parking maneuver, where we want to maneuver the vehicle into a given parking spot. The planned path, shown in purple here, should satisfy the kinematic, dynamic and no collision constraints. However, we do not really care about timing, so we do not care when exactly the vehicle will arrive in the parking spot. In terms of obstacles, we only have to consider static obstacles, shown in white here, as the boundaries of the parking spot. And should there be, for instance, a pedestrian crossing along the line here while we're parking, we can simply stop the vehicle along the path and wait until the pedestrian has passed and then finish our parking maneuver. An example for an application of trajectory planning is an overtaking maneuver, where our vehicle, shown in blue here, wants to overtake the slower red vehicle in the front. To this end, it's clearly not enough to just have a spatial path planned for the overtaking maneuver, but we also need to know where the vehicle will be along this path over time, because for instance, if there's this green vehicle here oncoming in the other lane, we need to know that our maneuver is finished by a certain point in time. Finally, note that we use the term motion planning in this course to refer to either the planning of a path or a trajectory. Another important distinction that we have to make in motion planning is between structured and unstructured environments. Here, the term structured environment refers to an environment where the drivable area of a map, meaning the area of a map that is obstacle free, is subject to strict traffic rules. An example of this would be a highway. Whereas in an unstructured environment, the vehicle is allowed to drive around arbitrarily in the drivable area. An example of this would be an off-road area. In between these two extreme cases of either having very strict traffic rules or no traffic rules, people often consider also so-called semi-structured environments. This could be, for instance, a parking lot. In semi-structured environments, we either have much fewer traffic rules or these traffic rules need to be followed much less strictly.